welcome back again. So I've done a couple of videos on this in quick succession. I don't normally do that, but let's just cut to the chase. Stable Cascade is here. There's a big rush going on at the moment. Um, we're all waiting for support to land in Comfy UI so we can just use it normally. And there's been a number of ways you can get it running, one being diffusers and the other being, um, well, it's probably the same. But the point is, the other is the collab option. So um, if I just jump over, so this was the collab I released earlier today, and it was missing a few things. It didn't have any negative prompt, and also the seed was only four digits. So what we did was we just uh, made a few changes. Oh, yeah. And also, you had to manually save the images, and Colab's a bit of a ball ache. So I've put in a little save routine. So it's pretty much the same. I've added in a SMI because this one is made for A100. The other one is for the free. So you can still use this one on the free tier, but you're limited to this size. So I wanted to see what it could do. So we went for the uh, A100. We've mounted our Google Drive. And then I'll just show you. So we can click run, sync Google Drive, install, load, and we're straight in to the parameters. Right. And so what I've done, I've added in the negative prompt now. Um, we put in our positive prompt. Um, I would advise leaving these as they are, because that's actually for the prior, which is meant to upscale from the original to the 1024 size. And then the next, anyway, whatever. I would change these if you want to change the size of the image. Just make sure it divides by eight and it won't throw any errors. Um, and I've left these alone at the moment because they run pretty good. Um, but basically... I'll run through what's happening here. So you click run and that sets the job, I guess. But then you click here to actually make the image. You'll see it generate here in the final two stages, I think. And then it puts it into content with the prompt and the seed. Now, obviously I should say, didn't I? I've increased the number of uh, digits. So you got a seven digit seed. It's random. So you can't affect, you can't pick it or anything. It just means you've got a wider range to generate on. And then, uh, so you generate, 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 make a bunch of images, maybe go back up, change the prompt, change the size, do whatever it is you want to do. Remember to hit play whenever you've made a change here and then generate the image, maybe make some more and so on. And when you're done, run this. And because you log logged into Google Drive, it'll send it across to a folder. I just changed one of the numbers at the end here, but to be honest, you know, I think it's always going to default to four now. <laughs> so, yeah. So that's pretty much how you use it. Um, it runs really nicely. Just a few notes, which I put in here. So it can generate natively at 4,000, 4, so 4K generation with 30 gig of RAM. It does 4096 by 2048 for 25, and it does 2048 by 2048 in 19. So that'll run on a, a 4090. You could do 2K native generation on a 4090, and it hasn't even been optimized or anything yet, so this is just amazing. Um, I obviously took it down a bit because we want to make things run nice and quick. I found there was no real difference between 2048, 1536, and 20, 2048. So this is like close to uh, 1920 by 1080. So a little bit, a little crop. It's a little bit better than, so you can downscale it slightly and that's nice. Um, but just over 16 gigs, unfortunately. But I guess you could probably make this smaller and just use an upscaler. So it's going to fit. It's going to fit. Uh, people are going to be able to run this. Um, we've already proven with the T4 that it'll run. It's just, uh, you've got to use a smaller sized image, which is a bit weird. It likes making bigger images, which was the interesting thing I found out about it. So I guess let's just have a look at some of the images that I've made while it's loading. And then we can generate something and have a look at that. So these are some of the better images that came towards the end as I'd figured out my prompt and stuff. But considering this is like a base model that's not been like fine-tuned or anything, and we don't really have the full settings for it yet either, 
Um, this is pretty, pretty, pretty good. I was surprised to see the cut, like the details in the hair and the skin. Clothing isn't very sharp, but that's something you usually have to train. The backgrounds are quite repetitive too. But again, that sort of stuff tends to get picked up on when you do your fine tuning. Um, but for an ape wearing expensive clothes and sunglasses, this is pretty good. Um, you know, we certainly couldn't just generate a 2K before. So this is actually going to be a massive step forward. And I think once people get their hands on this and actually start training it, it's going to be insane. This is one of my favorite images out of the whole set because it's just so clean. Like when you look around, you really have to look around to try and find something wrong. I mean, you could say the waistcoat, maybe it's strange how it goes around is a uh, waist, but sunglasses are pretty good. Surprisingly, they normally always mess up. Um, the ears don't look too crazy. Like, I don't, you know, you overanalyze it when you, the gold necklace could be better. It's not very sharp. You know, so it's like you get critical about it, but the, gotta remember this is a 2048 by 1152 image. So on this one, the hair's a bit weird, and it's made. <laughs> yeah, the, the, and and also the sunglasses are kind of becoming part of his eyes, but um, you get some black and white stuff. So we've got a missing finger there, maybe, but maybe he's just a bit of a gangster. I don't know. And here we have more, more like this. These are, like I said, these are pretty good. I mean, uh, when you're trying to make something that you, you're not going to find a chimpanzee wearing a pair of sunglasses like that. So it's doing its best. Um, I feel like if you had trained Ray-Bans on like a 3D chimp, even that would be probably enough to push it over the edge because it's doing, it's doing really good. I suppose the when you're doing apes, the fingers don't look quite so bad. <laughs> um, but some of these were really fun. And it's going to do better with humans, especially after you use like face fix. I've seen people using face fix with SDXL already um, after the after this. So, you know, they'll go in and just do the face with SDXL on this high res image that was coming out of cascade. I've already seen workflows for that. These are some of the early images I was getting out of it. So I was still adjusting my prompt and messing around with the size. These aren't probably quite as, these are probably more of that. Well, no wait, that's back to normal. See, oh wait, there's an alignment issue there, but the, there was a reason for it. You see how he's got two pairs of ears. It's because I had a funny resolution set. So it's not aligning because it's not divisible by eight or something. It's something to do with the numbers. Anyway, you get better images when you figure that out. <laughs> All right. So that's pretty much, that's pretty much what I had to say. So the new fork is up in the same, uh, GitHub. It's a fork of MK Shing. So I just took the fork I did of his work for the basic version and just built it out a little bit here and there and just made it a bit more usable. Like I said, the addition of the negative prompt was pretty easy. You just had to add that, this, uh, this, this, and this. And then obviously actually set up the, um, set up the variable there. Uh, that's all, that's all you had to do really. Cause it, I didn't do it. It was already built in. I got it from the, um, the priors hugging face instructions. So yeah, it is what it is. So like I say, that's all I've got to show you. Um, I hope that helps. I'm going to add this to the article and hopefully the next news we have is the comfy UI support. So see you next time.